Welcome back to Snetterton for this, the first of two races this weekend of Lotus Cup Europe. The overall race lead gave the way of Gavin Kirby. Class battle still raging on with Jose Vassilin, there, number 69, coming under a bit of pressure now as he accelerates up towards the bomb hole through the right hand of Vassilin. Racing here for the first time, but another Snetterton newbie, Marcus Nikovic, is right there behind him and looking for a way through on the inside now, diving up towards the very fast right of Coram Curve. Vassilin stands his ground, Duff's being kicked up ahead of him though, somebody runs wide and Jose Vassilin trying to attack and defend at the same time. Class battles rage on all the way through the order in Lotus Cup Europe. Here in front of a huge crowd, part of this Lotus Festival in Snetterton this weekend. Great racing being delivered, 38 you can see BJ Chong, who's been a mainstay of Lotus racing in the UK since the Lotus on Track Elise Trophy began. And behind him what's going on, we've got the rest of the elite is working their way down towards riches including the 211 you saw number 39 simon deacon's car that recovering after an earlier spin 72 down plant they're going through another of the many novices that we have in the lotus cup europe many of these drivers having come from track days or even absolutely no motorsport experience whatsoever before going racing it's great to see them on the grid up front though two experienced drivers gavin kirby leading john walker gavin kirby started racing in the lotus on track at his trophy john walker came out of caterham racing where he was very successful in the academy and then in road sport racing and now in second place he's on the tail of kirby and these were the two drivers that shared the race wins at the nurburgring for the opening lotus cup europe meeting of the season we had five lotus 211s in the top five places on the grid we've still got the top five locked out by the 211 model but the leading two getting away now Kirby accelerates out of Russell. This is the third place fight. Scott Cruikshank ahead of Mark Gooday. And then coming back at the pair of them is Tom Chataway as they power their way over the line now. Kirby goes through in the lead. Mark Gooday there in the orange car once again trying to attack on the run up towards the right-hander of Riches. Can he go all the way around the outside? It's a brave effort, but it's not going to pay off for him, I don't think. No, it doesn't. So the place claimed then by the red 211, that of Scott Cruikshank. The white 211 of Tom Chataway also trying to join in as well. The 211, this relatively new model, very, very popular and very quick for racing purposes. We've seen them in GT4 racing in the international GT scene as well. But those leading five getting themselves together, having a great battle now. As lower down the order, you can see there number 11, which is the invitation class car of Andreas Holtzhack, the Honda engine XC Jet 1 going ahead of Harry Stiegmans. And Stiegmans, another hugely experienced driver. Crookshank still under pressure as he turns his way left and then right through the S's. Mark Gooday has tried most things to find a way past him. He's succeeded in getting ahead yet. There, fifth is Chataway. And once more, he's just lost a length. He really is dependent, I think, of those two holding themselves up. Then Chataway has an opportunity to close, but it's not really paying off for him just at the moment. Turning their way out of the S's on towards the bomb hole they go. Two 11s ahead of the Exeges and the Elise is lower down the order. Great variety that we have of the current Lotus models within this grid. They're powering on is BJ Chong, hovering around 13th place at the moment. Another good little battle here, looks side by side. Pat McBennett in the black and yellow wasp-like Lotus, just going around the outside there you can see of Moritz Hannapel to hang on to the place. Pat McBennett turning his way now into the bomb hole, but he leaves the door open. Hannapel tries to fight back on the inside, but the Elise S2 in the hands of Pat McBennett. Now I think he's going to lose out coming into Corum. No, he's not. He's able to defend really vigorously here. Corner by corner, it looks as though the door is left wide open and he's about to go a place down. But Pat McBennett hangs on in there as the leaders swing their way through Riches. John Walker on the back of Gavin Kirby, but as yet he's not really been able to make a move to gain that place. Up towards Sear Corner they go now. The top two, of course, are very shortly going to encounter traffic and that could well just interrupt that lead battle. It could indeed give John Walker in second place an opportunity to close. The rest of the field all filing through. Harry Steegman's there with his 211. Number 128 goes through. 117, Thierry Verheist, the Lotus dealer, is next. And there you can see Cliff Fox with his Honda engine XE Jess 1. The leaders in and amongst the back markers now into the S's, so they've got past one slower car and it's made no real odds as far as the leading duo is concerned because the gap remains the same between Kirby and Walker out of the S's and then up towards the right-hander at the bomb hole. They will go. In the meantime, 142, you can see, is Jean Race with his Lotus Exige Cup 255 and behind him, number 92, the next of the 211s, Christophe Lissange. Lissange went well early on in the race, then he had a rather grassy moment coming out of the bomb hole, so he's playing catch-up once again. And Walker has definitely caught up to Kirby now as they turn their way down towards Russell. They're almost nose to tail, and as they went into Corum, you can see Walker dabbing the brakes because he didn't want to hit the back of the leading car. He 
comes close, but is it close enough now to make a move? Over the line they come. What's that? Three lengths, maybe four between them. Gavin Kirby has the advantage still. Quick check in his mirrors as he goes past the pit. Up to third has gone Mark Gooday. Down to fourth, then he's got Crookshank. And this is Philippe Loop's view as he comes over the line. Steve Williams is ahead of him, number 18, with his 211. But Philippe Loop goes round the outside, I think, as he turns into the corner. Let's just see whether Williams can fight back on the inside. No, he cannot. So Philippe Loop gains the place. And that's going to put him now up into eighth position. Philippe Loop going well as the race leaders continue their squabble at the head of the field. Lower down the order there, number two, you can see, for some competition winner, Matt Johnson. He's not disgraced himself in this race by any means. He's not last, and in fact, he's still pitching for another place. Look, as he tries to make a move on the inside of Jonathan Mobbs with his exige, and he goes through on the inside. Another place gained then for Matt Johnson, going really well. It'd be good to see more of him in racing, because with every lap that he does, he gets better and better. More 211 battles rage on further down the field. Philippe Loop versus Steve Williams still. Those two nose to tail. Loop having gained the place, not really being able to pull away. Williams coming back at him. They're launching himself over the curve. Andreas Holtzheim with the Honda engine XEGS1. BJ Chong there with the bewinged Elise, the Fox construction back car, turning his way out of the bomb hole down towards Coram Curve. Up front there, the gap between the two race leaders, negligible between Kirby and Walker. And now you can see Hot Titan trying to make his move under braking as they get to the braking area for Russell. He was blocked by Laurent Febvre there. Febvre with the 2.11 gets a little bit sideways coming out of the corner. So the French driver ahead of the German comes across the line. Then Laurent Febvre just ahead of Andreas Hot Titaner. And a replay here of somebody getting it wrong. And that in 26 is Pete Story. Turns the car back in the right direction, continues after a story to be told. Driving standards flag as well, they're being shown to one of the cars as they come over the line, as now Andreas Holtzheitner makes his move on the inside of Laurent Feb. Is that going to give him the place? No, it's not. Feb with the French trickler on his rear wing, hands onto the place, stands his ground. And the same is true up front, where Gavin Kirby, there, look, is still ahead on this, the last lap of the race of John Walker. For third, it looks as though it's going to be Mark Gooday, because there he is, ahead of Scott Crookshank, and Tom Chataway has fallen back, rather, now in fifth place as the race leaders wriggle their way out of the S's, still having to contend with traffic, of course, and as they turn their way now in towards the bomb hole, John Walker is close, but he's been this close race long. What he's not really been able to do is make a proper move, but now he's getting much more Terry about this. Tries to find a way around on the outside, but there's traffic in the way. Can he get a gap on the inside? No, not coming out of Coram. He can't. Down towards Russell this time. Check and flag is going to be at the ready. And so Gavin Kirby is set for a second win in three races in Lotus Cup Europe. He accelerates his way up over the line. And Gavin Kirby is going to be on top here at Snetterton. Gavin Kirby takes the check and flag now to win the third race in the motel back Lotus Cup Europe. Second across the line is John Walker. Mark Gooday does hang on to third ahead of Scott Crookshank. And there, scything his way through the traffic, the fifth is Tom Chataway. Well, Gavin Kirby wins, but only by 0.7 of a second. Under massive pressure through the last few laps of the race. Laurent Feb in the meantime, accelerating his way up towards the line here. He's going to be 11th. Andreas Hotzeitner is 12th, and BJ Chong in the white at least behind is 13th as they come across the line. So Gavin Kirby takes a second win of the season in Lotus Cup Europe, but his regular opponent, John Walker, right on his tail, just seven tenths adrift as they took the chequered flag. Confirmation that Gavin Kirby is the race winner ahead of John Walker and Mark Gooday third ahead of Scott Crookshank and then Tom Chataway fifth with Christophe Lissandre recovering for sixth ahead of John Race and Philippe Loop, Steve Williams and Greg Race rounding out the top ten. In the classes, Gavin Kirby and John Walker the top two ahead of Mark Gooday within the 2-11 battle. The Exige class won by John Race ahead of his brother Greg Race and David Jacobs coming home third. In the production class, dominated by the Elise model, Pat McBennett a class winner ahead of Dan Plant and then Mark Yates. And the invitation class goes the way of Andreas Holtzheitner ahead of BJ Chong and Stephen Grove in the third. So the top three drivers here at Snetterton on the podium, a very happy race winner in the person of Gavin Kirby. But let's hear from the class winners after race one. Gav, fantastic. A race win for you. Yes, uh, very pleased. Qualifying went well. Um, we had a very small window of opportunity with the weather and uh, I managed to stick a couple of good laps in very early on and that put me on pole. And uh, the race uh, continued the good luck. I managed to finish first. Uh, John gave me a, a good run. And I had Scott Crookshank um, trying in the early stages, but he seemed to tail off a bit. And uh, yeah, it was very good. Enjoyed it. John, your first time here at Snetterton and a race win. Fantastic. Thank you. It was, it was the first time here. The, the track is uh, very nice. It's uh, challenging. And um, 
The festival is fantastic. So, good day. Thank you. Thank you. Pat, you brought quite the, the fan group with you this weekend. They've got to be pleased seeing you win. Yeah, I don't know if they were a, a hindrance or a help. Um, the racing was good fun, but it was and it was good fun in the campsite at night time. But it's hard to drive the car when you haven't had much sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a great result and a win nonetheless. Oh yeah, yeah, delighted with it, delighted with it now, but very tired. <laughs> <laughs> Andreas, you've driven a long way to be here this weekend, and it was worth it because you've won. It was definitely worth it. Yeah, we had a very bad qualifying and uh, fixed the car overnight. We had lots of work on the car. And uh, yeah, we were glad to, to, to start in the, in the first race. We started from very far behind and it was lots of overtaking and it was unbelievable for me to, uh, yeah, to finish first in the invi in invitation class. So I enjoyed it very much. It was a very nice weekend. It was uh, sometimes to laugh, sometimes to cry. But in fact, everything is, happened very well. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much.